Welcome back as After Hours continues now from the Euler Hall of Fame room at Rogers Place. And speaking of the Hall of Fame, uh, one of the game's most decorated players, Corey Perry, will end up there one day. But first, uh, you'd have to retire, and there's no sign of that 19 <laughs> years into your career. Are they going to have to carry you out? <laughs> they are. <laughs> My wife's always said that they're, they're going to have to cut the skates off me. So, um, you know, I just love playing, love, love battling, and love being a part of uh, that dressing room each and every day. Still have lots of game left, Louie. Yeah, and you had some game tonight. You had a, a couple mishaps as well, a little friendly fire from Ryan McLeod, but a tight, hard-fought game against a division rival, your first matchup against Vancouver since uh, coming out with Edmonton. What did you think of that game tonight? And obviously came up a little bit short, but a tight, hard-fought game throughout. It was a tight game. Um, you know, he, you look at how they play, and they're always up in your face and, and uh, you know, trying to play that three-quarter ice game. And... Um, you know, we found some found some rhythm near the end and uh, had you know had a few chances, but you know sometimes it uh, just doesn't go your way. You were getting a little work on the bench here, and uh, Brad Harrison gave you a little privacy with the towel. Here's a stick that comes up and and catches you right there, and obviously rattled you a bit. Not unfamiliar for you. You seem to be around the mix a lot. There's TD fours working on the jaw a little bit, and then Brad then Harrison the says, goes "Hey, up. it's playoff time. We're not showing injuries." And he covers the app. So I had no a idea what privacy, was going. I thought he was trying uh, to give me the towel, but. but just par for the course for you getting involved physically in that regard. But uh, not not great when it's friendly fire. No, yeah, friendly fire. It's uh, never feels never feels good yeah. when it's friendly fire. Yeah. So, Corey, uh, until last season, you appeared in three straight Stanley Cup finals, uh, Dallas, uh, Montreal, Tampa Bay. So if you want to get to the Cup final, the message would seem to be you're going to have a better chance if you have Corey Perry on your roster. So let's go back four years to Game 5 of the final in the bubble playoffs here in Edmonton. Mm -hmm. The pass for Sagan. Perry's got the puck again. Out to Klingberg, walks the line, takes the shot, hit a body. Corey Perry trying to stuff the puck in, he scores! So that double OT goal pushed the Dallas-Tampa Bay final to game six. And a year or so earlier, you would never have thought you'd ever be a Dallas star or anything other than an Anaheim Duck. So June of 19, uh, you're having dinner in the summertime with your agent, Pat Morris. This is after 14 years in Anaheim. And what did he tell you? Uh, he said that I wouldn't be a duck anymore and they're going to buy me out. And, um, you know, what he said was take this as when they cut you from the world junior team in 2004, um, you know, use that, use that motivation that you used then to, to using it now and, uh, and just push yourself forward. And, you know, I, I took that advice. I went back to work, started power skating and working out and doing all the, uh, all the things that, you know, uh, what was I, 34, 35, that, you know, you kind of have to do to, to get yourself going again. It must have been tough. I mean, with the Anaheim Ducks, you won a cup there in 07. That was a team that you'd been with your whole career. Mm -hmm. um, branching out anew must have been difficult at that stage. Your career. You must have thought you were going to be there for your whole career. I thought, it, you know, you signed that eight-year extension yeah. and uh, you're there for 14 years. And, you know, it's uh, it's unfortunate that that's it's a business though, yep. and you know, I, that's that's the way I look at it. It's been a business, and um, you know, some things work, some things don't, and uh, they want to go in a different direction. So, it uh, like I said, it lit a fire under me, and mm -hmm. I'm still going. Yeah, Corey, here is a video question for you from someone who once played with you in Anaheim. Corey Perry, I hope you're enjoying your first official after hours appearance. I know you had that little one. That doesn't count. I had about six or seven, but we're not <laughs> counting. Anyways, you're a man of many superstitions, and I got to see that firsthand on game days. You're in your own little world, Perry. You're touching door and handles and knobs, and you're uh, getting dressed at certain times on the clock. And I'm, basically didn't talk to you on game day because you had so much going on. But one of my favorite superstitions that you had was the garbage can thing. So when you were struggling for goals, and I mentioned this about three years ago on air, you would put your stick in the garbage can in the middle of the room before the game, and you would encourage guys to, to throw stuff in the garbage, to spit in it, to dump their <laughs> drinks in there. And that for you was symbolic of you were going to get a greasy goal, a garbage goal, and that was going to get you out of your slump. So maybe where did that come from? Where did that start? And uh, any other your superstitions that you want to uh, talk about right now? Go ahead, bud. <laughs> well, one, I won't talk about any other superstitions because I think you just nailed all of them. But, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, the uh, stick in the garbage can, that's been, that's been going on for yeah. a long, long time. Um, 
No, I've already done it here a few times, and guys are looking at me like, what? I've seen guys do it before. <laughs> and yeah. yeah, and they're going to take it out of the garbage can because, you know, you don't put a broken stick in a garbage can, the trainers take it. But I'm like, no, 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 guys, just leave it, leave it, leave it, and just throw whatever you need in there. And they're, like, they're all looking at me. But, uh, yeah. well, you know, but it that's makes just, total sense, right? You it's know, a you garbage goal. You think you want to score a goal, yeah. you have to do more, be more creative. No, go to the, go to the go hard to areas and yeah. go to the blue paint, yeah. which you do your whole career, and get a greasy one. So, yeah. Louis, that takes us then to yep. the highly synchronized pregame Corey Perry routine. Yeah, you do this every game. And obviously I'm out there doing through, running through our pre-tapes before, but this is from the bubble back in 2020. And these are different days, just to let you know. This is how <laughs> close you are timing-wise and the exact same thing. Maybe talk a little bit of this. I know you said this morning that this is where you go out and you get the mental game going. In the room, you get your physical game going, and then on the ice. But this is you focusing, getting yourself ready, right? This is just four minutes of me just hanging out by myself, looking yep. at the ice and, um, you know, looking at their net, looking at our net, and just visualizing and, uh, you know, just trying to think, think of where I need to go on the ice and, uh, and what I'm going to do tonight. And that's just my little time that I've always done right from junior all the way through my pro career it's uh it's same time every every night and i mean like to the second well, it's, yeah. the same time. <laughs> it's a lifetime of yeah, rehearsal yeah, yeah, uh yeah. you play the game with passion and that was evident last saturday night in a discussion that you had rather one-sided discussion you had with evander kane on the bench not the kind of thing that you would want to play out in public but our cameras caught it louis yeah, I mean, and these are things that go on on the bench, right? You were obviously heated about something on the ice. You've been around the game for a long time. Now, he's played over 900 games too, but I think people will look at this sometimes and think, I can't believe you're having an argument or you're going out of the bench, but this is necessary to get to a point where everybody's on the same page and you're playing the right way. I love the way you handled this. I like the way Evander handled this. And then you're going to see a little clip here at the end where you bump into him and you kind of say, okay, it's over, here we go, let's get ourselves going. And that's my favorite part about it. You're going to have that argument, but then you know your teammates and you know you have to go to war for one another afterwards and you make up and you say, let's get going and play better hockey. And he has, and, and you have as well. It's it's about being better in the end, isn't it? It is. Um, you know, it's unfortunate that the cameras caught it because it does happen sometimes, you know, behind cameras. And, um, you know, it's not all just here here you know happy and uh, you know they're like i said the other day brothers fight um <laughs> harder know, than anybody exactly and yep. you know to to get us to that next level you know sometimes it does happen and you know it's uh, like i said and i to i talked to vander about it and i uh, i apologize because you know he he didn't need all of that but uh, i mean you know it, it just came out and just the emotion in me and uh, and you know yeah, at the end of the day we found a way to win that night yep Earlier, I referred to you, Corey, as one of the game's most decorated players. You are in the triple gold club. That's uh, Stanley Cup, uh, Olympic gold medals, and world championship. And uh, you're also one of only two players ever to have won the Memorial Cup and the World Cup, in addition to those three, Scott Niedemeyer is the other. Um, and we can add the Hart and Rocket Richard trophies to your trophy case. Uh, do you ever reflect on all that you've accomplished in your career, or are you too busy playing and trying to win again to do that uh right now i'm too busy trying to win another one of those top ones there the stanley cup um you know it uh, at the end of my career when it's all said and done and uh and i hang up the skates and you know put the stick away it's uh you know you can look back and and think about the teams that you you played on and the guys that you played with and um you know those are all pretty special moments in my in my career uh, this question comes from Elite Window Liquor. That's a heck of a handle right there. But anyway, uh, question for you. What's your favorite NHL fan nickname? Scory Perry or The Worm? You've heard both of them <laughs> many well, times. <laughs> I, I've been called The Worm my whole career. That was given yeah. to me in uh, my second or, th or my third year, I guess, um, and by Todd Bertuzzi when he came to Anaheim and called me The Worm and it stuck. And, um you know, my little guy's nickname in uh, in Tampa was Little Worm, so it, uh, it's, <laughs> it, it, it's, uh, it's carried on. Uh, this one from Rob Sujit. Uh, you've been on a lot of championship teams. What about the Oilers makes you feel they are ready to win the Stanley Cup? You look at the pedigree in there. Um, the guys, you know, they've been they've been down the, down the road. Um, they've gone to you know the conference championships. Uh, you know, they've had battles with with teams to. You know to get to that next step but um you know there's a guy in there 
Connor. He wants he nothing. He wants to win as bad as anybody else, and everybody else in that room is following in his footsteps. And you look at the lineup; it, it's deep. Our our D are big and strong and and physical and can move the puck and skate. And um, and then you look at our our goaltending; it's uh, it's elite. So uh, I really like what we have. Little known fact about Corey Perry, and we're going way back for this question. Um, you were lucky as a tot to even be able to uh, skate. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us about the medical condition that you had to overcome. Yeah, I was born uh, with club foot, and I was put in cast for, I, I believe, I, it was either six weeks or six months. I don't know. My parents told me. This they, was both feet? Yeah, both feet. Uh, we, they still have the cast at home. They're only about, I don't know, a couple inches long. It's, uh, and... Yeah, they were born with them, my feet inwards, and uh, they put me in cast and right away and fixed it. Club foot is, uh, I guess it takes on the appearance of the foot rotating in a, around about the ankle, right? Yeah, r- rotating in, I, and the, the cast are Rotating foot. inward, right? In, inward, yeah. yeah. So, uh, How long did you have to wear the cast? It, I, I believe it was six weeks, maybe six. Did they, they had to set them then. They had to set them They had to set them. Which means break them. I'm guessing. I, 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 yeah, I, I haven't really talked that much about yeah. it because I know it, it gets brought up. But um, yeah, it was a condition that that I was born with, and but uh, we fixed it right away. Awesome. All right, from a, a difficult start, you have evolved into a player who's revered as a teammate and loathed by the opposition, and you have a reputation for doing almost anything, well, just pretty much anything <laughs> that it takes to win. Here's one of our favorite Corey Perry. I'll do anything moments. <laughs> <laughs> That's Alexander Semin. Oh, where did my stick go? What were you thinking, Corey? <laughs> well, he was, he's not allowed to sit like that on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> well, then yeah. he deserved it. Well, yeah, the stick, the stick, the for stick it. was out. You know, I don't know. I, I just, uh, you just, it just went by. And <laughs> I, I can see the, the wheels turning in your mind all the time when you're on the ice, and it looks like you're just waiting for that. Uh, what can I do to really bother somebody? Has that yeah. always been a part of your it's game? All, it's always been a part of my game. You can go back to junior. Yeah. You can go back. It's, uh, you know, my aunt once said, uh, once I get to the rink, you know, there's like a, a light switch that goes off, and um, I'm a different person at the arena, and and it, it's true. I feel at home at the rink, and this is where this is where I want to be. Ethan asks then, uh, what would you hate about yourself the most if you had to play a game against yourself? In other words, what do you think opponents hate the most about playing against you? <laughs> oh, man, I don't know. It could be a little stick, the little stick here or there. Um, goalies, I know the goalies don't like me. The goalies on our team, they like me, I think. Um, but uh, goalies on other teams, I mean, I've done a, a few things like, you know, gotten in there in the crease a little bit, and uh, really, <laughs> yeah, I've had to, I've had some battles uh, along the way. We talk so much about players going to the front of the net. Zach Hyman, you know, this year what a terrific year he's had. He goes to the blue paint all the time. You've made a career out of it. Why do more people not do it? You know, everybody says, "Hey, you want to score goals? Go to the front of the net. Go to the dirty areas." But I believe it's because of things that happen to you tonight. You're going to take a stick in the face. You're going to take a punch in the face. You're going to get ragdolled from time to time. And you have to be willing to go through that, to endure that, to score the goals in those hard areas. Do you think the same way? I, I, I really do. Um, I've talked to, to Himes about this quite a bit this year. You know, we sit beside each other in the dressing room, and he's just like, "When I just don't understand. When guys aren't scoring, just go to the net. Yep. And... You know, good things might happen, and it's true. I've uh, I've been told if I don't have blue paint on uh, on my skates by the end of the end of the game, I'm not doing something right. Okay, a couple things we want to get in as time's running short. Uh, you and Blakeney have one son, Griffin, and he is mm-hmm. nothing short of adorable. Here was Griffin in Tampa Bay last year as the Thunder Kid. So excited because there's going to be like a, over a million people. A million people. Over. Over a million. Over 100 million. He's got the toe drag down. (laughs) And here he goes. Look at that confidence. Not a lot of kids would have the confidence to skate out like that in front of a million or a hundred million or a trillion people, whatever it was Griffin said. But where does that confidence come from? I have no idea. He was... uh, Ever since he, he found out that he was going to do it that day, he was, uh, he, he, he just said, you know what, I, I got this. I don't, need, I don't need your help. I don't need, to, need anybody to tell me what to do. So um, 
you know, it's a, it's a pretty special moment. That was in playoffs as well. So it, uh, you know, it's pretty cool to see him out there. I mean, look yeah. how small he looks <laughs> besides Cirque. That's awesome. Uh, one more reflection question. Law enforcement runs in the, in the Perry family. Your brother, AJ, is a London City police officer. Your father, Jeff, uh, was an OPP f- uh, police officer. I think your grandfather had 33 years of service with the OPP. Uh, they go to work um, to serve the public, but also hoping to come home safely at mm-hmm. night. And here are you playing a kid's game for a lot of money. You must reflect on that I on do. occasion. I do. Um, you know, I had the opportunity to go on a, a ride along with my brother mm-hmm. uh, two, three, four years ago, something like that. And to see what he goes through each and every day, um, to see what what's going on there, it's uh, it's a daunting task. And I'm glad that uh, you know um, that they're doing it, and they're you know they're coming home safe every night. Perfect. Thank you, Corey, for being with us uh, on After Hours tonight. Really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. There's Thank Corey you. Perry, relentless in his search of more hockey, hockey success, was our guest on After Hours. Back to wrap at Rogers Place in a moment.